This is Athletic Greens, and this is Pond's Gum, also known as Spirulina. This one, the Athletic Greens, costs $6.50 per ounce. And just for some context, this little green drink here costs more by weight than filet mignon, champagne, caviar, and silver. Now this one on the other hand, the spirulina, costs about $0.0136 per ounce. And here's what you may or may not realize, I didn't, is that by weight, spirulina is overwhelmingly the main ingredient in Athletic Greens. If you look at them here, you can see they basically look the same. That's a markup of around 47,646 per which means for every single dollar that Athletic Greens spends on spirulina, they make a return of $47, which is more than literally any other powder that I can think of. So how the f does this happen? And what does it say about us when we will willingly and happily give them $47 for this when we can just go buy this in bulk? In this video, we're going to explore the three critical ways that Athletic Greens was able to trick 20 million people, including me, into buying pond scum and the critical lessons it teaches us about something that we are all striving for, which is the elusive quest for happiness. Starting with secret one, which is the quest for the magic pill. Wow! The Come On Ceramic Knife. It never needs sharpening, and it's only $29.95. It really works. So what's the magic pill? The magic pill is something that you've definitely bought yourself numerous times throughout your life. I know I certainly have. It's stuff like the diet pill, the dream vacation, the self-help book, the like one weird trick to lose belly fat, and no matter what shape that magic pills take, they all promise the same thing, and that's salvation. A single thing that's gonna make us better. It's gonna help us lose weight, it's gonna help us run faster, or be smarter or more productive. Like for me, I'm really into running. So if somebody is gonna sell me a supplement that's gonna tell me like it's gonna increase my VO2 max or I'm gonna re recover faster or whatever the thing is, I'm like, cool, get, like take my money, give me the pill. And stuff like this is things that we've all been buying like forever. Literally humans have been buying these magic pills since the beginning of history. We've all heard the term snake oil salesman and this whole term came about because people were going around selling bullshit stuff, snake oil, right? Which was promoted as cures for all sorts of different things. Sound familiar? A single powder that can replace your entire supplement cabinet. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. Athletic Greens has used this little magic pill thing to devastating effect. but. If we're gonna understand how this works, it's important that we first take a beat to look at something that's a little bit boring, but it's really, really important, and that's their nutrition label. So here's how these things work. So the way nutrition labels work is that they list their ingredients in order of weight. It's the highest weight ingredients first with lower weight ingredients listed towards the bottom. And then further, because AG1, Athletic Greens, whatever you wanna call it, is a US company, it's legally obligated to declare the amount of certain ingredients by weight. And this I learned from watching a really great video by another scientist, I'll link in the comments. So looking at the back of AG1, we can quite literally see organic spirulina and then lectin as ingredient one and two. And while I'm of course trying to make a point by calling it pond scum, and there might be some very minor benefits to spirulina, though science really doesn't show any meaningful impact for healthy people, here's what the spirulina does do. It gives them this cheap foundational product that gives it this cool green color, right? This just looks healthy. I mean, these things look like it's gonna do something for you. And it's this superficial labeling right, this basically fake labeling as this superfood green product that lets them fulfill this magic pill promise. So they talk about 75 whole food ingredients and probiotics and prebiotics and adaptogens and blah, 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 blah. And does it have all this? Yes, it absolutely does. You can look at the back, it's all there, they list it. The thing about this is these ingredients are wildly underdosed. What does this mean, underdosed? Basically anything that you take has a certain amount of dose in order to be effective. You can think of this with alcohol, right? If you just take like a little tiny dropper of alcohol, it's not gonna do anything to you. But if you drink a whole bottle, it's gonna make you sick. And this is true with food as well. You need, and with nutrients like vitamins or minerals or adaptogens or pre and pro probiotics, you need to take a certain amount of these things for them to be valuable. And all of these ingredients are wildly underdosed in AG1. And this is simply because spirulina is overwhelmingly the thing that's in it by weight. But the product would be significantly less interesting and less brandable if it was like white or neon orange or like blue, right? It just wouldn't feel healthy 
like this. But here's the thing about all this, before you skewer Athletic Greens for unethical practices, Here's a question that I think is important that we ask ourselves, which is how do we as consumers let companies like AG1 get away with this stuff? Like it only works if we'll give them the 47 bucks for this thing instead of figuring out what's inside and going and buying this. And honestly, like the information is right here, right? It's all in the back of the package for us to understand and investigate and really learn about. And what's even sort of more interesting when you extrapolate this is that it, this strategy is not something that's unique to Athletic Greens. Once you're aware of this strategy, it's something you'll see all over commerce. Colostrum powders that are all the rage right now, they tout all sorts of crazy benefits, right? Cold water plunges, sugar sweets tell us they're gonna bring us joy. Like cocaine was even once touted as this health giving thing. We see magic pills all over the place. You know, the chair that's like any, I'm looking at a camping chair in my garage here, you know, it's like, oh, it's packable, it's foldable. <laughs> and one of the big reasons that all these brands can do this to us in modern times is something that we are very complicit in, but I don't think we realize we're doing. And this is that we're outsourcing our thinking to micro celebrities. So take just a second and kind of travel back with me and think about the mid 20th century. There's 12 major TV channels, there's no internet, and there's just a handful of really well-known celebrities, the Frank Sinatra type people who are the only like influencers, right? It's just a few of these folks. And those folks were seen as very much apart from society, right? They were celebrities. They're these kind of godlike figures. And as the fans, as the public, the us, we really never got to know the real them. If you think about like the 1990s and Tom Cruise, you didn't see behind the lens of his life. You didn't see his house and all this stuff. You just saw what they showed you. It was really like these people apart. They felt very aspirational and different. But since then, everything's changed. If you look today, we have this huge onslaught of social media and it's completely changed the way that fame exists in our society and beyond the fame part, it's changed how it influences us. If you think about all the micro celebrities that we all follow, they span every manner of little niche topic. And this is from parenting, like, you know, not even just parenting, right? But it could be parenting ADHD kids or parenting a hyperactive kid or parenting a gluten-free kid. It could be like from buying cars to, you know, just to Toyotas to just Tacomas. It could be about what businesses to start. It's these incredibly micro niche things. And what's unique about this whole idea is not just that there's more famous people than there were ever before, and there are those more famous people than ever before, but it's just how much we outsource our thinking to these people. And I think this is because of the niche nature. They have this unnaturally large influence on our buying behavior because we think, well, they know they're like focused in this one topic area and they, they feel like me. It feels like someone I could hang out with, right? So they must know what they're talking about. I should just, you know, I should just listen to this person. I don't have time to like research all the ingredients here and figure out what's true. This person says, Huberman says, and this actually nets out in the data. So this study shows that compared with mega influencers and macro influencers, broad celebrities, right? The Kim Kardashians of the world, compared with mega influencers and macro influencers, micro influencers and nano influencers possess less popularity and fewer followers but they account for the majority of influencers and tend to perform better in terms of user trust and interaction. We've completely outsourced our own rational thinking to random people on the internet and now trust them to tell us what to do, how to spend our money, and why we should pay 46,000 times more for this green powder, which has dubious and probably no real health benefit. And it's not that I don't think these people are well-intentioned, but all of us have a clear motive, which is attention, right? Or sponsorship and to make money. And many of these people have only a very loose understanding of what they're talking about. Basically, they don't know any better than you. They just have an incentive. And here's the interesting thing about this is it's actually not your fault that you're doing this. This is something that's programmed in all of our brains. So these folks, we look at them as perceived authorities because of the platform. And when we listen to them, it's because we're falling prey to something known as authority bias. This is a cognitive bias. A cognitive bias is like basically a shortcut that your brain takes. And it's something that helps you make decisions quickly. There's too much information in the world for you to take in. So you need some way to shortcut. But these biases also cause us to make a lot of mistakes in our thinking. So while we outsource our thinking to these folks, the thing that you realize when you start to dig in is these people office often give us just plain wrong information. Right, so let's like take a look for a second at a very famous example of a mega influencer, which is Andrew Huber. Stanford educated, right? The guy seems very smart, 
very credible. And yet if you really dig in, his recommendations are littered with misinformation. So I'll give you an example here and then we'll talk about this for a second. So there was one episode with Huberman Lab where he had this guy, Robert Lustig, on the podcast. He's a pediatric endocrinologist. And this guy uh, is very well known for arguing that sugar, all right, particularly fructose, is a toxin, all right? And this this is a, wep- a word he weaponized. And at one point, Lustig is citing a study that he say, basically says where it showed that ultra-processed food that it inhibited bone growth. And he basically explained that in order to figure this out, they used human subjects in Israel to test if these claims were true. Well, one reporter went and went to fact check all this stuff. And what they found when they looked for this 2021 paper was that the thing was actually tested in vivo in rodents. This is something that we need to understand about all these science-backed claims is that there's actually not a lot of very good science done in the world, specifically not when it comes to these brands. They could be done on very small population sizes. They could be done on animals. They could be done in all these various ways that provide no true causality, no real understanding of if a creates B. And so when all these people just throw around the term science back and research back, all that that means is that there was some research done. Research could be like, I drank this one and then drank that one and I think this one works. And the point of all this is to not tell you who to listen to or not listen to, and I'm not here to argue if Huberman's a good or a bad scientist. The point of this is that when we give over our rational thinking to experts like Huberman or Tim Ferriss or the thousands of micro-influencers who are all telling us that this overpriced spirulina is great. We've completely outsourced our thinking. We don't bother to figure out what's true. And the result of this is this micro-influencer phenomenon opens us up to be vulnerable to what I'm calling big, bold pseudoscience claims. So the big, bold pseudoscience claim, this isn't just something that that Athletic Greens uses to get us to to take their overpriced powder. It's something that many products use. You'll hear it all over the place now that you've watched this. It'll be research back, science back, right? And it's these big, fancy words. And you can look back at many products that have used these big, bold pseudoscience claims to huge impact. Luminosity, I think they're still around, but they did it with what they call brain training and neuroplasticity, right? It was basically little games you played online. And they even went as far as to say that it could reverse cognitive decline and things like Alzheimer's and things like this. And all that neuroplasticity means is that your brain can change. That's all it means. It literally is a nothing word. There was zero evidence that this could reduce Alzheimer's. They ended up with a huge FTC lawsuit. Emergency said they could stop colds, right? Science back, zero evidence. All it is is vitamin C. And if you look at the research, vitamin C basically has no impact on colds, very clear. There are hundreds of companies who do this all the time. Just start watching commercials and look how many people tell you it's science backed or research backed. It's amazing. Everything's science backed. But what this means is actually nothing. These phrases mean nothing. They are big, empty words that we swallow because they sound sciencey and we don't have time to look into it all. So here's the overarching formula I see for all this. Big fear plus magic pill plus pseudoscience equals you pay $47 more for the same. So what's the point of all this? Is the point that everything's a scam and you shouldn't buy everything and you can't trust anyone? Absolutely not. I have one very simple hope for this video. And that is that you take back your decision making, your rational thinking brain. (laughs) I'm making this video for one very simple reason. And that's as a rallying cry for all of us to reclaim our critical thinking skills, to really understand how and why we buy stuff. Because when we spend our money, we are actually spending something which is far, far more valuable than that. And that is our time. We are giving these companies $47 for what we can pay a dollar for. And that resource, the time we spent to earn that money is 100% non-renewable. And when we give it away for stuff that doesn't actually do anything, we're giving up our agency over how we spend our most precious resource, which is the time we have in our lives. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.